So welcome to the uh, Laveau Channel at 28th Street and Decatur Avenue Channel Improvements Community Meeting. My name is Justin Naylor. I'm a project manager with the City of Fort Worth. Also on this call, we have Councilmember Flores. Uh, Councilmember Flores, is there anything that you'd like to say before we get going? No, just a quick brief comment. I want to welcome everyone, um, you know, for uh, joining us and, and Justin and uh, our project manager, development engineer and uh, project engineer. Very important effort we're making here, uh, Lebo Channel Improvements. Um, well, the list is tall and long. There are a lot of things that need to be done, but I commend staff uh, for working with my office and, and finding a, a path that we can take to incrementally um, make these improvements. So thank you very much. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Councilmember Flores. So this project is being brought to you by the Transportation and Public Works Group, uh, specifically the Capital Delivery Division. And within that, uh, we're working in the program that's called our Hazardous Roadway Overtopping and Mitigation or Mitigation Program, otherwise known as the ATROM. And because we are a government entity, we do have to use acronyms. And so ATROM will be the acronym, acronym of the night. Um, the, the main purpose of the ATROM program is to address uh, flooding from overtopping of the roadway uh, whenever heavy rains come. And, and the, the main reason why we're interested in that is because water over the roadway can sweep away cars very easily, as well as pedestrians. So it's a life safety issue that we're looking to address with the HROM program. This project is currently in the project development phase. And our mantra with the project development is that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So the prevention that we're looking for is we want to make sure that we have a good understanding of the source of flooding. We want to make sure that we have a good understanding of the city plans in the area, like a master thoroughfare plan, which dictates what's road, what roads will be where and what size they'll be, a park master plan, an active transportation plan, which kind of dictates where trails will be. We also want to make sure that we have a good understanding of the existing utilities. This is this would be city and city water and sanitary sewer facilities, as well as electric, communications, gas lines. We want to make sure that we have a good understanding of all those, uh, as some of those can be very difficult to, to work around. We want to make sure that we have a good understanding of required permits. Uh, the city, we do have to get permits for our work. This would be you know, a permit from possibly the Corps of Engineers, possibly uh, a floodplain permit, <clears throat> so that everybody can be in, in, in on the good on good terms with FEMA. And we also want to make sure that we understand all the other site constraints before we move this into a, a full-fledged project. So with this being with this project being in project development, things are are liable to change as the project develops and moves along. So again, the primary reason for this project is to address overtopping at 28th Street uh, caused by an undersized channel. As Councilmember Flores mentioned, uh, Lebo has a long history of flooding uh, with millions of dollars having been spent to mitigate the flooding uh, so far and, and still millions more to spend. Um, a master plan was completed approximately 15 years ago with multiple projects having been completed since then. One of them is the 28th Street culverts, which TxDOT did uh, about nine years ago. TxDOT, they came in and they, they improved the culvert crossing, but because channel improvements hadn't been done downstream of this, of this crossing, the full channel solution wasn't able to be implemented at that time. Uh, so you can see in the image on the left, the, the dot showing roughly where our crossing is, and the image on the right showing roughly the extent of our project. Um, not that any of you really needed any further proof, but here's some images of, of flooding that have taken place in this area. You can see in the image on the right the, the amount of debris that's stacked up against the fence next to 28th Street. And you can see that, it, that a chain link fence just doesn't offer a whole lot of resistance to to significant amount of water. So I'm going to go through our project scope and kind of lay out what we're planning to do, but I want to start off with showing where we are today. Uh, the black line that runs from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen represents roughly where the center of the channel is today. You can see that it crosses under some uh, underneath the existing culverts that TxDOT improved uh, under 28th Street, and then runs as, as you get downstream or south of 28th Street, runs very close to Decatur Avenue through a concrete line channel that's not in very good shape today. Uh, on the south end of this. Uh, of our project is Trail Drivers Park, which 
uh, just, just for reference, north is to the right on all of these, these images moving forward. Uh, to the west or to the left of the, to, on, uh, above the screen is the uh, north side rail station, uh, the Trinity Rail Station. And again, Trail Drivers Park is to the, to the south here. So one of the first things that's going to happen is the channel is going to be uh, lowered and realigned and stabilized. Uh, the, the channel bottom is going to be stabilized using uh, these blue, these images that are shown in blue. It's called a rock riffle structure. Those uh, are, are rocks that are stacked strategically to help stabilize the channel at, at important points. Um, the channel bottom is going to be made out made up out of rock, um, and, and the idea is that. We're going to, with lowering the channel, we're able to flatten out the slope, which means we're going to slow down the, the speed of the water. Um, by slowing down the water, we, we reduce the, the opportunity for uh, erosion. And then at the far right side of the screen, you can see and that big box, which rep that represents a drop structure, which gets us from the lower, uh, lower channel elevation to the higher existing channel elevation. And again, the culverts will be will remain in place. And this is a, this is an image, a cross section of what that channel bottom is going to look like. Uh, you, you can kind of see the the bed material that that's a little bit rockier, and uh, you can see the stone protection there. After we get the channel uh, realigned and lowered. Uh, then we'll be coming in and we'll be installing a riparian buffer, which is shown in green, which is kind of a natural floodplain area uh, with some taller shrubs. And then we'll also be installing uh, planting similar to Brennan Avenue, uh, the project that's just downstream of this one. Uh, so if you wanted to go get an idea of what this one, this project will look like, you can go down to Brennan Avenue and take a look at the plantings there. So you, you can see on the right bank or the east bank that there are, there's a heavier tree planting area. And, and this is required by the Army Corps of Engineers for our permit. And then on the west side or the left bank, you can see that there's more of an urban landscaping area with a, a more regular interval of trees. And, and so this image is, is what the overall cross section is going to look like. You can see over on the left, the, the, the urban landscaping, which is, is less dense, and then over on the right, the riparian enhancement area or, or the, the mitigation area that, that's required by the Corps of Engineers. Also with this project, this project is considering a future trail uh, that, that's shown in the parks plans. Uh, this trail would provide connectivity to the rail station. Um, right now we're, we are working with Parks Department to, to determine if we can uh, uh, partner with them to, to get the trail constructed at the time that, that we do the construction of this channel. Uh, but, but that well, that is still in process. So to, to kind of recap and go over some of the benefits, this uh, project uh, will reduce the overtopping uh, will, at 28th Street. Uh, it'll reduce that likelihood, making it for a safer area. It will help reduce the, some of the flooding that takes place at 28th and the railroad underpass. Um, that'll, this will help by one, preventing water that, that may today leave the channel and go into Decatur Avenue. And then uh, it'll also help by lowering the, the channel, the, the water surface elevation in the channel, thus making that sump, allowing that sump to drain up more quickly. Uh, it's going to restore some natural floodplain functions to the area, which is going to provide some environmental and some aesthetic benefits. And it's also going to reduce maintenance costs by eliminating the, the failing concrete channel and, and keeping our crews from having to go out and replace concrete. Uh, anticipated mile, project milestones, we anticipate having design complete uh, in the spring of 2022, uh, going to bid and awarding the contract in the summer of 2022 with construction starting in the winter of 2022 or 23. Uh, we anticipate construction take, uh, lasting until summer of 2024. Uh, uh, for funding, this, this project is bond funded and is, has an estimated cost of $5.2 million. And with that, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to open this up to any questions that we may have. Uh, Michael Crenshaw, he's gonna be reading off any questions that we have. Uh, Michael? 
Thank you, Justin. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, as I know we have some uh, uh, visitors on with us, uh, and I don't have any questions that have come through on the chat window just yet. I do want to highlight, though, that there is a project website uh, shown on the screen here. You can get to that through the city's new website um, and see some details. And of course, the contact information on the screen is um, whom you can contact regarding with questions that you have regarding the project. And the um, current uh, timeline that, that Justin talked about is tentative. Of course, we're in early days, but as was mentioned earlier, um, LeBeau has a long history and an extensive amount of effort has been put into it to date. So this is another a tremendous milestone in that process. And one question, uh, Justin, that does come to mind is, is there going to be any interruptions to traffic uh, during, anticipated uh, during this construction effort? That, that's a great question, Michael. Um, at, at this point, we, we don't anticipate a whole lot of traffic interruptions. We don't anticipate closing Decatur or Northeast 28th Street. Uh, or, or Gunther Avenue shown there, which is access to Trail Drivers Park. We, we don't anticipate that. Most of the work is going to be taking place in the channel. So at most you'll see, you know, periodic trucks coming in and out of the channel area. Um, and get, usually probably on the north side of 28th, it'll, they'll be coming in off of Decatur. And then most likely on the south side of 28th, they'll be coming in through the uh, Trail Drivers Park there. Okay, so that's good that it, the, uh impact, I guess, from a traffic standpoint, uh, be minimized there. Also, you, you pointed out in the funding that it was uh, funded by bonds, and we want to highlight that that is the stormwater revenue bonds. Um, the stormwater revenue bonds are financed uh, through our stormwater utility fees that we all pay, and that's important to note. The, um, you may have seen the recent article in the Star-Telegram that highlighted the, the bond program and the variety of projects that are that are being pursued to, to help make not only roadway crossing safer, channels more efficient, storm drain rehab, et cetera, things being done. This is one of those projects. And uh, regarding your contacts that you had there, Justin, on the screen, um, Michael Wellbaum, do you want to introduce him and mention his role going forward? Yeah, uh, so Michael Wellbaum, is, he will be managing the project on the city side moving forward. Uh, so he's going to be taking the project through design and into construction. Uh, that, that's, that will be his role. So we're kind of in this transition area between project development and, uh, and moving it into a real, a, a full project. Uh, so feel free to contact either one of us, but moving forward, Michael Wellbaum will be uh, He'll be coming back and providing updates in, in future community meetings, uh, as well as responding to, uh, to likely other inquiries. Okay, good, good deal. Um, one thing that um, Councilmember Flores pointed out, the, the need for planning alignment, the future TxDOT improvements to 28th at Decatur. Um, I know you've, there has been coordination up to this point, Justin. You, I think you have a slide that kind of highlights the general area and maybe mention that we have been in coordination with TxDOT um, on that. Yeah, so TxDOT is going to be working on 28th Street and uh, the low pass, particularly at the railroad, is, is one of the biggest trouble uh, spots in the area and we have been coordinating with TxDOT uh, regarding those improvements. Uh, they actually have a public meeting coming up in November uh, to discuss those improvements as well. Um, and, and we can certainly provide that information on the project website if anybody is interested. Uh, but, but yes, we have been coordinating with TxDOT regarding those improvements. Okay, good point. Yeah, that sump under the railroad has a, I think that's one of your photos there. That has a very long history. And so this project will lower the water surface elevation helping drain that sump under the uh, the underpass there um, so yeah we can add that to the to the web the project website as we go 
Um, and so this is the project development phase, roughly early days, about 30% are just right there. So what will the other um, meetings and, and about roughly when those will occur? Not not dates, but I mean, as far as phases of the project, Justin. So we anticipate future community meetings at when we have construction plans at a 60% level. Uh, so we'll have a lot more detail flushed out at that time. And then again, at 90%. And then uh, finally, a community meeting with the contractor once we have a contractor on board. Uh, so that would be after the contract, the project is then bid and awarded to a contractor. Uh, at that point, the contractor is going to have a lot more information about when they, where they think they're going to make their access points and when what everything's going to look like as far as from a day to day standpoint. Okay, good, good to know. So there will be um, uh, further meetings. Those will be announced on the. Um, project website so I'd keep keep an eye on that um, and the new uh, city's new website and that's fairly easy to find uh, that project web page location um, and as you said this meeting will be uh, recorded and so a link to that will be on that page as well for your friends or neighbors or or others uh, that would like to attend and and listen in as the as the progress uh, progress is made and and the pr the project uh, moves forward, and I don't see any other questions that have that have occurred um, up to this point. And if you do have any questions, and even after we're done, um, those questions can be directed at either Justin or Michael Wellbaum. Their email addresses and phone numbers were. We're put up there please do let them know reach out if you have any questions um, and again this this inf this uh, is being recorded will be on the project website and so that they are friends and neighbors can watch it in coming days and if they have any questions they'll know who to contact from that and future meetings will be scheduled as Justin mentioned 60 percent roughly 90 percent and that will provide much more information, detail, plans, engineering type information. So I think that was it for our presentation and the questions that have come in. And I um, don't believe, Justin, if you have anything else or uh, Councilmember Flores, if you have any closing remarks, you're welcome to add those. We have some folks that have called in and we can unmute anyone that would that would like to uh, to uh, interject a question, or I think everyone that has called in or uh, is able to unmute themselves. And any questions from our audience? Uh, Michael, this is uh, Councilmember Flores. Uh, my closing remarks would be again: I appreciate everyone listening in. Uh, I, I also like you made the presentation, um, you know, under, you know, with the uh, with the graphics, with the maps, locations, so people get a sense of the scope of the project. Again, Lebo Channel is is a rather sizable uh, area to be uh, making improvements on when it comes to, uh, you know, stormwater and things related to that. So it's um, it's good to give a sense of place as to where the project's going to occur, when it's going to occur. So uh, thank you, and uh, thank Justin for the uh, presentation and the, and the work. All right, thank you. And we'll, we will, um, again, same format. We're not sure when, uh, a time when in-person meetings will resume, but should that happen, we'll, get, we'll all get to meet face-to-face. -face. But if not, we'll definitely still have this avenue to to present and get the word out to everyone. And so um, we'll leave this up for a few minutes. Um, and if anyone has any questions, you can type them away in the chat window or unmute yourself and, and ask away. Uh, a few of us will, will hang around here to, to hopefully answer any questions you might have. And if you have, if you think of it later, cups in your mind later, you can email or, or phone either Justin uh, Naylor or Michael Wellbaum, they can answer, get you, or get you an answer, get you to the right person to get an answer for any questions you might have. So 
I think that concludes it for our presentation. Like I said, we'll leave this going for another few minutes or so uh, in case anyone ha wants to type something in the chat window or, or pop out a question. But otherwise, thank you, Justin, for the presentation. I want to thank uh, Friesen Nichols uh, for the project development work they've done on this to this point. And going forward, um, Matt Busby with LAN is on with us, and they'll be carrying the torch forward on the detailed design part of the work, uh, working with Michael Wellbaum there. So if uh, we have we have everyone in the room, if you have a question, feel free to ask away. And thank you all for, for coming and hope you have a good evening. And we'll stay on the line for a few minutes in case anyone has any questions. Thank you.